Hi, I'm Pastor Scott Nellis, uh, the associate at All Saints, and we're doing a, a video series about me, uh, a way for you all to get to know me and my family um, over the next four weeks. Um, I know you see me on Wednesdays uh, in the Bible study and on Sundays, but we thought that it might be a good idea to get more um, insight into who I am and, and for you all to have an opportunity to get to know my family. Uh, we hope to be able to be there soon as a family with you all, um, but for now, um, I'm happy to to get to know you in this way. So, again, so we have my wife, Mary, and my daughter, Adeline, who's four, and Lydia, who's 11, and I'll allow them to tell you a little something about them. So, I have been a nurse for about 16 years. Uh, we've been married for 15 years. Yeah, 15 years. We are both uh, Indianapolis Colts fans. I like to, in my spare time, like to crochet, and I love strong black coffee. And uh, music is my passion, so I'm excited to maybe share that and participate in that at um, All Saints when we get to go there. Adeline, like you said, is four. She is in preschool. Yeah. She's missing her friends. What did yeah. you want to say? And then I like my school. I go to my school every day. Yeah, you don't right now, though. But you love your teachers and your friends. And she told me the other day when she grows up, you want to be a unicorn that flies. And Lydia here. I'm Lydia, and I'm in fifth grade. I'm 11, and I like to play outside. And that's us. And that's us. So again, we hope to get to meet you in person soon. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. And uh, thank you for all that you do for us and for all saints. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, in this video today, I'm going to be talking about my uh, call story. That would be uh, kind of the path that I took to become a minister in the ELCA. Um, Lutherans often name it a call story, uh, thinking back to kind of the call of Abraham and believing that we all have a vocational call in life, no matter what job we, we find ourselves in, we all have um, a unique call in life, a unique uh, purpose, a unique thing that, that God wants us to do in the world for the good of the world. And I've done a lot of different things in my life, and uh, but I wanted to share a little bit with you about the path that I took to become an ordained pastor in the ELCA. So it goes back to 2008. I was a graphic designer at the Indianapolis Star newspaper in downtown Indianapolis, and about that time, the uh, church I attended had made available a full-time position for a ministry coordinator. And I knew about the position, but I hadn't thought about it. Uh, I didn't think of it for myself in any way until the president of the council one Sunday kind of tapped me on the shoulder and asked me to consider applying for that position. And um, I was kind of shocked. I hadn't, again, had not thought about myself in that role, um, but I had led some Bible studies and Sunday school classes and a youth group, and I'd done a lot of volunteer work, but um, never saw myself as a full-time ministry employee until that time. And I thought that I kind of felt that God was nudging me to listen to this man and, and what he was telling me. And so I, I prayed about it, and I talked with my wife about it, and I applied. And it turned out uh, I had the gifts that they were looking for, and I began in about November of 2008 as a full-time ministry coordinator, and that was at Cross of Grace Lutheran Church in New Palestine, Indiana. And I found within a few months that I absolutely loved the work um, I loved meetings, I loved administrative tasks, um, I loved playing in the praise band, I loved working in the sound booth, I loved um, giving Holy Communion, 
uh, to folks. I loved uh, working with kids and youth. I loved all of it. And so you would think that that might be enough uh, of a way that God was kind of telling me that, that uh, vocational ministry might be my calling. But in fact, um, it ended up being a, an online conversation with a former employee at the newspaper that began to kind of, you know, take that nudge to a new level. Um, I was describing my new position to him one line, and I said that, you know, I do a little bit of this, I do a little bit of that, but I'm not, I'm not a pastor. And he replied back, well, I think you'd be a good pastor. And I don't know what it was about that moment on that day, but I, I heard kind of, again, kind of a nudge of God that I felt like I needed to pay attention to. And so I talked to my wife, I talked to my pastor, I talked to uh, another fellow employee, and kind of told them what I might be thinking about doing. They put me in contact with the Indiana Kentucky Synod. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the ELCA has, um, I believe, 66 synods all over the U.S., and every synod has a bishop and an assistant to the bishop and, and staff that kind of oversee a region of, of uh, congregations. And I went and I met with the assistant to the bishop and I began what, the, what Lutherans call candidacy. And candidacy is a process by which um, a person seeks out discernment about becoming an ordained pastor. And that includes a lot of interviews and essays and a background check and a psychological evaluation. The ELCA, I think, does a really good job of wanting to ensure that the people that get called to um, ordained ministry um, are not only qualified, but have thoroughly discerned this calling um, in community. That, that it's not simply, oh, I feel called by God, so I'm gonna be a pastor. But that that discernment, that if you're called by God, um, that may be well and good, but let us, you know, let us as the ELCA talk about that with you and determine where you might best fit. And so I began candidacy and um, I applied to go to seminary. And I took a couple of seminary classes locally in Indianapolis to, to kind of see if I could handle that academic rigor. And, and I worked uh, in my position as a ministry coordinator to continue to kind of let that evolve. And in 20, uh, 2012 then, my family and I made the move to Columbus, Ohio to begin uh, my time at Trinity Lutheran Seminary. And that time was so formative for me. I, I went in as a man with not a lot of self-confidence. I felt called by God, I felt the nudge, I felt that I needed to explore vocational ministry, but I didn't have all the internal confidence that I had hoped to have at that point. You know, and the beautiful thing about God, I think, is that um, you've heard it said that um, God doesn't call the qualified, God qualifies the called. And I think that was the case with me. Um, I needed God to qualify me. I didn't go into seminary feeling like I had all the gifts and all the confidence I needed. But somehow God used that time in my life to form and qualify me and to give me the confidence that I would need. And so that time uh, included not only classwork, but um, an internship, um, uh, a time of chaplaincy, and more. And it was so formative. And by the time then that I graduated with Master of Divinity in 2016, I did feel ready. I felt not only called, but I felt then qualified. And um, I accepted then a call to Emmanuel Lutheran in New Philadelphia and, um, and began my work in August of 2016 as a fully ordained pastor. 
Again, the thing I, the, the point that I want to stress is that in 2008, my mind was the farthest away from anything like I'm doing now. I was content to be an ad designer at a newspaper. I was content to uh, start my family with my wife and, and, and stay put in the home that we had bought. But God had different plans and I found that when I became open to all that and I kind of let God take the wheel, um, the green lights kept going and, and the road was wide open and, and I loved every step of it. It was challenging. It, it, I didn't have enough confidence in myself many steps of the way, but, um, but God allowed me to follow the path that he had laid out. So I hope that this has been uh, helpful in getting to know kind of how I went from a graphic designer at a newspaper in Indiana to being the associate pastor of All Saints in Worthington. And uh, look for these videos for the next three weeks. And uh, I hope to tell you a lot more about me and, uh, and allow you to get to know me in that way.